This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I am here at Mortgage Fraud Auditors. I am here with the owner and founder, James Kelly. This is a brand new industry for folks out there. We're talking about forensic auditing. What does that mean for consumers, and uh, how did you get involved in this type of industry? I found myself a, a victim to the economic slowdown and bank fraud mortgage issues. And so 21 years as a real estate investor, nine years uh, working in banking part-time, and as everything started to melt down, I was here in the fall of 2007 until August of uh, 2010. I was trying to slug my way through it. This is pretty much the result of finding out why I'm reading reports we've lost $12 trillion in this uh, country so far as in equity and why we're seeing such high foreclosure rates and uh, things of that nature. Like you said, this basically became brand new. Was this type of thing even needed to a consumer before, let's say, 20 years ago? In my opinion, no. Clearly around 1995, I think, was probably the turning point when big banks, Fannie and Freddie, set up an organization called MERS. And I think that was a big tipping point when we started getting into securitization and what's turned into mortgage fraud. As a homeowner out there, we typically, we're looking for a home, we go out and find an institution, a loan, a bank, we get that mortgage and we begin paying on it. Sounds pretty straightforward and simple. You're saying there's probably a lot more going on behind the scenes than the typical consumer Knows. Absolutely. What happened in my case, I have 27 different properties and projects in six states in the Caribbean. And only I had nine mortgages on all of them, wasn't overly leveraged. And basically, even though I worked in banking, I had no idea that six of my nine mortgages were, were sold to Mortgage Backed Security Trust. The information they were giving me and what the courts were doing, it's just a mess. I'll, I'll be honest, complete mess. Some homeowners, I would say at least 50%, I think, would benefit from, from researching, you know, what is going on with their mortgage. I would say if you're getting a mortgage, make sure you're dealing with a portfolio lender. Try to make sure if Fannie and Freddie are running securitization in a more ethical manner, but if you ever find yourself in a non-agency um, securitization situation, I find those to be highly fraudulent. Let me ask you this, like you say, we go out and get a loan and, and try as we may, many folks, foreclosure is on the rise. A lot of people are facing this type of thing all the time. Who's in control of all this as far as the, the documents, the frauds, the predatory practices that are taking place out there? The SEC, your banking commissioners, they're supposed to be there doing their job. They've just failed. Uh, 49 of our 50 attorney generals signed off on a $25 billion bailout, and which involved robo-signing. No matter how I look at it, robo-signing is forgery. I would go to jail for forgery. It doesn't make sense, to be quite honest. How are you able to pierce through that veil, if you will, and kind of see beyond what, what we're seeing? Research, training. Um, back in uh, December, we had a training in California, getting a new software to work with in the Bloomberg terminals. And part of me feels like it's poetic justice because uh, Bloomberg is a major trading uh, platform. And historically, all we could do was go on the SEC website and we would literally deal through, uh, dig through like a thousand pages. And I mean, up to that with PSAs, uh, prospectuses, the formatting doesn't match. It's just, it's unbelievable what you need to do to research and you may not find what you want. With this new Bloomberg software I wanted to demonstrate, we're getting the detail that the pension funds managers are seeing. And what we're finding it is that what we are doing, what they're selling, where the profit margins are, and new items like pool insurance and default products, there's a lot of incentive not to treat borrowers, you know, correctly, not to legally honor, you know, their mortgages, in my opinion. Shocking, yeah. Let me ask you, we're talking about large institutions, investment banks, we're talking about even government institutions involved that we as the consumer, we go to them, we think we're dealing with them exclusively, and a lot of times probably not that way. Oh, absolutely. What I find out happens often is even though you think you're dealing with, say, Fifth Third or Chase or Bank of America, what you're really ending up doing, you're dealing with them on a servicer capacity. And servicing is kind of a uniform word, and it, it should be broken down into several categories. And if you're a servicer that helps set up a mortgage-backed security trust, you know, we need to realize that that is a servicer and a third party, and they're managing a completely separate legal entity. And if a trust owns your mortgage, that's a completely different company. Interesting. Wow. Obviously, if somebody who's going through a foreclosure out there, what about a folk out there that things are going okay? It feels like I'm paying my loan down. How, how do they come to you and, and why? 
Anyone who can get evidence is going to help them. If you're trying to refinance, if you're trying to deal with a short sale, if you're trying to get uh, settlement evidence or, f or foreclosure evidence, there's a good chance. And, and you can try on your own. You know, go to the SEC website, research, do everything you can. Um, you know, I, I encourage people to to self-help as much as possible. Refinancings are down, I think, under 3.5%. So if you have a mortgage at 7% and you're underwater, you know, and you want to get a lower interest rate, if you're able to locate evidence to say this is fraudulent, you lack standing, you know, this would help your situation. Let me ask you, what is the process involved? Personally, I like to try to set up a quick qualification because, as I said, you know, you can end up looking at, a, I'd say, two to 500-page prospectus. You could look at another five, 700-page uh, pooling servicing agreement. I mean, it costs a lot to do that. So what I'm trying to do is to locate, typically using the Bloomberg terminal, what I think will probably be the mortgage and a trust. And when if I can find that and I can find irregularities in it, or I can find what I would call unfair business practices, then I would say, well, it might be worth doing a compliance audit. Securitization audit, excellent. The Bloomberg screenshot are great because it's kind of hard. The way we search these geographically, and if we can find them in a trust, the one thing with digitalization has opened the door, it saved trees, but it's opened the door to a lot of fraud. Okay. But the thing is, closing documents, 99% of the time, are hard copy. Mm -hmm. So when we can we can get a criteria, and on a round loan, like 100000 is harder to do, but I've got one here for 640000 It was the only loan in that whole zip code for the year. Like the variables start adding up. It's hard for them to say that isn't your loan. So we're talking securitization that you're checking out. So it's not just homeowners. I mean, basically, if you have homeowners. some investments out there as well, obviously fraud and uh, documents that don't have the, the right verbiage on them or contract legalities, it happens. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the securitization, as I said, Fannie and Freddie seems to run it in a more ethical manner, non-agency. And I cannot find any reason why when you fill out a 1003 application form, there's a box for conventional. But I can't find any rhyme or reason why Fannie Mae guidelines, conventional lending, why some went to non-agency, some went to Fannie and Freddie. It, it, there's just, you know, there's no rhyme or reason why it happened. Interesting. So folks, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. You're going to see the website where you can basically uh, reach out here. His contact information is on there as well. That's James Kelly. And basically, if you are in a situation where you feel you need someone in your corner to uh, sift through a lot of the legalities of contracts basically you've gotten involved with, and I'm talking about being a loan servicing company out there, an institution, a bank, you name it. Uh, he pretty much has gone through all of this in the past 20 some years in the industry. He's worked with it here. This is a company that quite honestly came about because of a need. It was something that he got involved with personally. Let me ask you folks out there, let's say they don't even know, do I need it, do I not need it? What would you tell them? It's worth checking. I would say since the late 90s, early 2000s especially, if you have a mortgage that's being that you think is owned or is being serviced by a large bank or a Wall Street firm, there's a very strong chance that you're caught up in securitization. Check your notes, see if there's any assignments over the MERS. If you're dealing with a, lo a local bank that's a portfolio lender, you know, they play by the rules for the most part, to be honest. So um, it's probably not something, that, it's a sad situation because this country has lost 20 or 30 percent equity in our, in our you know, properties mm -hmm. on average. And for the banks that play by the rules and the homeowners who play by the rules, the property owners, it's a very unfair situation. But we've, you know, we have to recognize what we can get evidence. And the fraud is so massive the big banks, in my opinion, and Wall Street, that they were able to, to sink our economy down this level. And they introduced new products into these trusts that allowed them to profit beyond what a homeowner agreed to do. Because a typical homeowner agreed to pay principal and interest and taxes, basically. For the insurance that we pay is, is property insurance. And so a lot of the default products and pool insurance is something we never knew existed. And I know personally, if I knew someone who's going to take pool insurance or a default product go and bet against me failing, I mean, I would have never done I would have gone to a local bank. I would have never dealt with a big bank. It's amazing. I'm amazed at the folks that are out there offering the consumers these uh, products. They're coming at them so fast. I wonder if they even understand them themselves. One of the unique things is I started working in banking in the 90s is that there was a tremendous shift from where brokers took over the mainstream of the market from the big banks. And I remember back then it just didn't make sense. And now, to me, in my opinion, it does. Basically, the big banks and I can tell you from sitting in, a, uh, in an office, and I worked both for a, for a mortgage banker and originally for a mortgage broker, we were getting rate sheets in every day from the same big banks who said we could originate cheaper. 
There's no way. In my opinion, the only reason they were doing that was to give themselves like liability release. So the, the basically the originating by the brokers was releasing them from some of the liability from having their own employees sign the documents like the 1003. That's my opinion. Your opinion. Well, let me ask you, it really sounds like a lot of consumers can be affected out there. We're talking about these um, audits can assist with refinancing, short sales, loan modification. If we can find the evidence. You know, it's, we just, you know, you don't know until you try. And like I said, you know, I would say take baby steps, but still it's well worth looking at for anyone. Absolutely. I think folks would be out there surprised what you have signed on to. And keep in mind, there's a good chance, like you said, I think there's a good chance if uh, basically somebody was chasing you after a loan, there's probably a good chance um, you can take a look at it and you might be one of those that would benefit well. Absolutely. Wonderful. Folks, take a look. Once again, at the bottom of the screen is the contact information there, and that is uh, basically James Kelly, who is going to help you out here. It's a company that was started recently, like I said, out of a need. We're talking mortgage fraud auditors. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.